Hello, and welcome to Organ Miniatures, a weekly video series aimed at demystifying the organ. I am your host, Rob Lubinsky. Let's begin. A friend of mine who is a subscriber to this channel recently asked me a few questions about playing organ music. He specifically wanted to know what organ music looks like, as in how do you know which notes are for the hands and which notes are for the feet, how to know which manual to use and when to use it, and also how to choose the stops for a particular piece of music. Now, I thought these were some great questions, and so the next few videos are going to focus on how organists translate what's on a page into what the audience actually hears. Now, to be able to answer the questions about which manuals and stops to use, we first need a basic understanding of what organ music looks like. Now, for you non-musicians out there, don't worry, I'm not going to get overly technical here. In general, organ music looks pretty much the same as it does for any other instrument. We use the same standard notation system that everyone else uses that's been around for hundreds of years. Now, if you've ever played an instrument other than piano, you've probably encountered music that looks something like this. For most instruments, we have music on only a single line, and for you non-musicians out there, this is called a staff. Now, if you've sung in a choir, then you'll know that each voice part gets its own staff, but you typically see all of the parts like this. Now, pianists have it a little more difficult. Other instruments, as well as the voice, have a relatively small range that almost always fits onto one staff. The piano has a much larger range, though, and so it's impractical to try to fit everything onto one staff. Also, while most instrumentalists use both their hands to play, they are usually only producing one note at a time. Pianists, however, use both hands almost all the time and are almost always playing more than one note. So, to make things clearer, piano music uses two staves, one for the right hand and one for the left. Now, as you no doubt recall, organists also use their feet. So then, do the feet get their own line of music? The answer to that question is almost always yes. Most organ music consists of three staves, like this. The top line is for the right hand, the middle line is for the left hand, and the bottom line is for the feet. There is plenty of music out there, of course, for just the manuals, and this music has only two staves. But occasionally, you will find music that is intended for both the hands and the feet that has only two staves of music. In these cases, you will look for the lowest note on the bottom staff, and that will be the pedal line. The most basic example of this is a hymn. The majority of hymns are written in four-part harmony, which means that any given time you're hearing four distinct pitches. Now, hymnals will typically put the women's lines, alto and soprano, on the top, and the men's parts, tenor and bass, on the bottom. When an organist plays a hymn, he or she will always put the lowest notes, the bass line, in the pedal, and then play the other three lines with the hands. So there's your introduction to printed organ music. Next week, we'll figure out how to know which manuals to use when. As always, if you have any questions about anything you've seen here today, please feel free to ask in the comments, and I will do my best to answer each question. I'm also still looking for your suggestions for things that you would like to see in future videos, so please let me know. I'll see you next week.